and give a little signal to yeah. let us know. It's okay. Sorry. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his light. He did his very best to make the pillow smooth and bright. And this was odd, because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had no business to be there after day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come Sorry. and spoil the fun. Sorry. The sea was Story says, yeah. The sand was dry the sun as dry. Mm. You couldn't see a cloud because no cloud was in the sky. There were no birds flying up ahead. There were no birds flying. <laughs> the walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. They wept like anything. Try to be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. They wept like anything to see such quantities of sand. If it were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If uh, seven maids with uh, seven mops swept it for half a year, do you suppose, the walrus said, that they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the carpenter, and shed a bitter tear. <laughs> oh, oysters, come and walk with us, the walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We, we cannot do with more than four to uh, lend a hand to each. The eldest oyster winked his eye, and never a word he said. The eldest oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning he did not choose to leave the oyster head. But, how do you go? go <laughs> how do you go to bed? But four young oysters hurried up, all eager for the tree. Their clothes were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean and neat. And this was odd, mm. because you know, they hadn't any feet. And four more oysters hurried up, and yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, more and more and more, <laughs> all hopping through the rocky waves and scrambling to the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so, and then they rested on a rock conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. <laughs> the time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things, of shoes and ships and seating wax, of cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried, before we have our chat, because some of us are out of breath and all of us are fat. <laughs> no hurry, said the carpenter. They thank her much for that. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick. After he made them, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot my mind. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need. Pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. And now, if you're ready, oysters, dear, we can begin to feed. But not on us, the oysters cried, turning a little blue. After being a, such a kindness would be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing bad. Cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick after we made them come so far and made them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize with sobs and tears, he sorted out those of largest size, holding his pocket handkerchief before his streaming eyes. Walrus just said the carpenter. We've had a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came here now. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten everyone. Oh, sure.